Thanks everybody for coming. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Kulin Nation, and pay our respect to the elders both past and present, and elders of any other communities that might be with us here today. Catherine Ryan um, was first exhibited with us in 2000 in our inaugural Explorations Exhibition, which is now up to its 16th year now. And then in 2001, um, Catherine exhibited A Quiet Place, which was her first solo here. She has gone on to win and be a finalist in numerous major art awards. She has been acquired by significant private, corporate and public collections. And last year, um, she was showcased at Warrnambool Regional Gallery with a very impressive 20 year survey of her work. So I'm sure everyone's very interested to hear about the thoughts behind Catherine's work and I introduce her now to do her art talk. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but as an artist, we spend so much time on our own and more and more these days I'm completely retreating into the studio. So I'm not used to seeing so many people <laughs> or public speaking. Um, so please bear with me while I go and read from my notes today while I show you a slideshow. <clears throat> oh, and thanks for coming. It's so nice to see um, so many old friends that I haven't seen for many years because I've been away. So I hope I get to talk to you all as well. So for the talk today, um, I've put together a series of slides to try and show you where my artwork has been and where it is now heading. My work is very heavily influenced by my surroundings, searching out nature's elements, whether they're intimate details or vast landscapes. In recent years, I've been living mostly in Abu Dhabi since 2008 and full-time in Dubai since 2011. This has had a big impact on my way of seeing and inspired new directions in the work. I returned to Australia last year and I'm currently dividing my time between Dubai and Warrnambool, so they're, they're worlds of contrast, but it's, um, it's a good, good mix. So I'll just start the slideshow. So to give an overview, uh, last year, as Claire said, the Warrnambool Art Gallery hosted uh, my survey exhibition titled A Quiet Place, which looked at 20 years of my art practice from 1995 to 2015. We initially sifted through about 400 artworks since I'd begun in 1987. With the final short shortlist, we exhibited approximately 40 works. The majority of these paintings were borrowed from private collections. This was a unique opportunity for me to see the works again, covering a 20 year period, and to have them hanging side by side in the one large gallery space. It enabled me to have an overview and reflection on my art practice, which for me had come at a good time because I felt that the work was changing direction and it was just coincidence that it coincided with my return to Australia. So I was immensely grateful to the Warrnambool Art Gallery and my commercial galleries and all the lenders for making this exhibition possible. The Warrnambool Gallery produced a catalogue which is available from them and we have a sample at the desk. So I was immensely, oh, sorry, the show included earlier works uh, which were more minimal and atmospheric through to the silhouette series of pines and the more descriptive Western District landscapes, the charcoals from Dubai and the new coast series. It was very interesting for me to see the older works again and remember the painting struggles I had in the studio, trying to work out ways to paint them, exploring different painting techniques, long hours in the studio, lots of trial and error and determination. It also reminded me of all the different studios I've had over the past 30 years, the process of gathering reference material with my camera, the time spent alone in the landscape, absorbing and reflecting, and taking that back to the studio where I'm in my element making works. And that's the, the catalogue and some cards that were available. <clears throat> the landscape work. The series of Western District landscapes began by going back to what I knew best, what was most familiar to me. I had a long history with growing up on a dairy farm, witnessing the seasons and times of day on the landscape. This was a landscape that shaped how I saw things. 
My aim is to convey a deep connection, not only to place, landscape, nature, but also to bring you closer to yourself, to be still, quiet and reflective, to see the beauty. I'm always responding to what moves me, whether that's dramatic play of light, shadow, twilight, winter mists, contrast of light. But it's more the feeling and the mood I'm interested in rather than the literal description. It's a search for the essence of things. That feeling and mood, which the artwork hopefully captures or evokes an emotional response, is conveyed in how the paintings are done, more so than the actual imagery. So in making art, creating space, distance, mood, atmosphere, light, shadows, depth, dreamy, taking you away, a quiet, contemplative space, a feeling of contentment, bliss, somehow stirring the essence of that moment and place. These are the challenges in the studio. How do you do this with paint or charcoal? So my painting process involves many layers, slowly being built up, putting down information, taking it away, back again, redoing it, taking it away, and so on, on repeat. I'm always working with the juxtaposition of lights and darks, the contrast, whether it's strong or subtle, imagery that conveys strengths and fragilities, what is there and not there, until you arrive at a point that is balanced and harmonious and conveys the feeling you are after. The large paintings take approximately three to four months to do each, slowly building and reworking, problem solving. The drawings can take anywhere from a few days to a week. There's a very similar process with the drawing of putting down information, rubbing back, reworking it, taking it away, redoing it all again. All the time this is building depth, a history and space creating lights and darks, balancing the composition and mark making until it all sits how you wanted it to, the vision that you had imagined. The works have at times hovered between the ethereal, moody, foggy, abstracted, minimal, less is more, to more descriptive, familiar and grounded locations. <coughs> The work has often focused on the winter landscapes, with their quality of softer light, the weather more moody and atmospheric. Gradually, more farm references were brought in, the imagery became clearer, grounded by fence lines and location. Memory and personal history intertwined with the artwork titles of back road names, place names from my upbringing carrying forward these places and memories from country life and a dirt back road dairy farm into the world of art and exhibitions. The placement of trees in the landscape can be seen as witnesses of time, self-portraits, strong and defiant, seemingly fragile but strong, wind blown and a dramatic contrast to the sense of space depicted. The silhouetted trees set amongst an ambiguous setting highlights the beauty in the cragged trees, the delicate yet strong lines of the branches, allows you to notice details or placement that you may not have noticed in a busy landscape. So it's taking the detail out of the whole and noticing all. The work is often focused on this attention to detail, contrasted with a sense of vast space. Overall, the ongoing concerns in the work have been looking at contrast and balance of opposites, the strong and fragile, the vast and intimate, distant space and intricate details, a connection to place, to capture the feeling, mood, essence of place, being close to the elements, the weather and the time of day. For me, it's about what resonates, what I'm passionate about, inspired and moved by and feel a connection with. The snow landscapes. The series of snow landscapes from 2010-2011 
came about from a trip to Scotland to the highlands around Glencoe. We had been living in Abu Dhabi, so the contrast was immense. There we go. <laughs> Going from desert heat and city dwellings to the vast snow-covered landscapes of the Scottish highlands. Just amazing. I was blown away by this landscape. I had travelled there previously in an autumn, but to see it all under snow was just magical. The light was so beautiful, the snow had blanketed out unnecessary distractions and almost painted itself for me by highlighting the contrasting pine hedges against the subtle hues in the snow. The sense of space is vast in that part of the world, so for me it was reflecting all the things I was interested in. The challenge was how to paint it. I had no idea how to try and paint snow or landscapes like this. So it was a good venture into the unknown. But I was so inspired and was driven to capture some of this beauty. It was a series I really enjoyed painting and have fond memories of that time in the studio, as well as obviously a time there in Scotland. It was such a dramatic landscape, full of light, strong and subtle contrasts, with immense distance, space and huge skies. Most of this work was based around our stay at King's House Hotel in Glencoe area in the Highlands, but also in Yorkshire, in particular Castle Howard, where Brideshead Revisited was filmed, for those of you who know that series. <laughs> um, moving to the UAE was at first both quite a shock and exhilarating, and really threw me out of my comfort zone and opened up a whole new world for me. With an 80% expat population, it is diverse in its peoples and cultures, all living together in this Islamic country. I took to the streets with my camera and photographed extensively as my way of seeing and learning. It was a way for me to both capture with fresh eyes my new surroundings and also in time to sift through the visual feast to slowly identify a visual language I could work with and express in my artwork. This was, on the surface, very different subject matter, with Arabic lanterns and details of flowers and plants. But for me, it was still linked to the concerns that had always been in my work. So things like mystery, mood, atmosphere, contrast detail with endless backgrounds, intimate details, and above all, a focus on light. Light was the first thing that struck me about living in the UAE, that is, apart from the extreme heat. And having brilliant sunshine all day, every day, again, apart from the sandstorm days, for those who are familiar. Also, the exquisite architecture of the mosques and especially historical areas. It was all pretty heady and exotic, really. You are surrounded by sunshine, Plants and trees cast in dramatic shadows. In the evenings, Arabic lanterns light up, casting beautiful patterns and offering a dim, atmospheric mood. There's Arabic music and a scent of shisha pipes. Living in downtown Dubai, we are surrounded by light and water features, which are all aglow at night. I was searching for ways to interpret all this in my work. I started looking more closely at light patterns and shadows, plant details, seeking out nature in the urban gardens near where we lived in Old Town. St uh, starting with a series of works in photography, I then moved to charcoal drawings. I wanted to express and respond to the environment I was living in, and I was finding it harder to paint the Australian landscapes from afar. The series of charcoals began at first with Arabic script, then to Arabic lanterns and onto plant details and more and more into shadow and light, which is what I'm still continuing with in my ongoing charcoal works. Living in a city like Dubai, I was missing nature and lush landscapes. So it was important for me to find beauty and seek out nature's details. This sh shifted my view to the attention to detail, noticing everything the frangipanis, bougainvillea, dried roses and leaves cast by plants, shadows cast by plants, 
the design of lanterns and mashrabea, architectural details, water and light patterns. I could see connections with the lace work and design of lanterns and plant details not too dissimilar to the silhouettes of craggy pine trees. During this time, I also started painting, started oil paintings depicting dried roses, bougainvillea, shadow leaves, often highlighting them against a plain background, noticing the intimate details. I'm loving working with charcoal again. It feels like a more immediate link from your thoughts to your mark making. There's less technical issues like with oil painting. I use the erasers as much as I use the charcoals, both compressed and willow. I can easily draw all day and all night, absorbed in the work, until I have pushed it as far as it can go. I'm fairly tenacious and I don't like giving up. So if something is not working, I will problem solve and work on it until I've taken it to a resolved place and the work sings back to you. This is my last show here in Tinder's Lane with the UAE influence work. The new work. My time in the UAE has influenced my way of seeing, as I've been trying to say, in that now I am more focused on observing details and noticing beauty, appreciating the small things and the beauty in the everyday. Shadow and light continue to be my main focus and I'm exploring new imagery and ways of expressing what moves me. I'm currently pretty obsessed with shadows and light. I'm constantly taking photos of shadows and noticing all the details in plants and the gardens around me. The way the light is enveloping or moving, creating shadows and silhouettes. So the new works are still highlighting the dynamic shapes of trees or plants against either a softened blur or dramatic light, either with or without shadows. When I returned to Australia last year, I was so struck by the 12 apostles on the Great Ocean Road, close to where I grew up. And seeing them again with fresh eyes, taking in the wild forces of nature, and finally breathing in fresh coastal air. The light, space, and cliffs were so dramatic. I had always thought scenery like this was too saturated in the tourist views we see but I really wanted to try and tackle them in a charcoal drawing series. The drawings that I'd previously done on lanterns and shadows informed how I would approach this seascape. I could see how the cliffs needed to be done as velvety, jet black silhouettes against the flittering light of the water. I had never worked with water before, so it was a good challenge and exciting to be working with new imagery. With the new works that I'm starting, I mean, my, my intention is to take the work to a more ethereal and dreamy feel, with light that is either more striking or translucent. I'm hoping to bring a sense of motion, fluidity, perhaps fleeting, noticing and capturing the shadows. The ambiguity offered by shadows, which is then contrasted with the strong shapes of silhouetted leaves. The work is still concerned with juxtaposing opposites of ambiguity and clarity, the endless and the intimate. It is also about finding beauty and seeing the ordinary in new ways. I have just moved to a new house and set up a new studio, which is surrounded by a lovely garden, so no doubt some of that influence will creep into the new work. I have been working on a series of shadow charcoals, and the two over here uh, were the first in the current series. And I'm preparing canvases to follow these new directions in the work. So I will see where the new work takes me. Um, and I'm enjoying my time retreating and being absorbed in the studio and finding nature and beauty in my surroundings. Um, so I thanks for listening, everyone. And, uh,